Hello and welcome to this 4C module on glycemic control in intensive care unit. As you all know, this has become a very hot topic in intensive care and this is something which we have to practice on a daily basis. So the objective of this module would be to give you the incidence and practical management tips of managing hyperglycemia in ICU and to identify and manage the different glycemic emergencies like diabetic ketoacidosis, hyperglycemic, hyperosmolar, non-ketotic, diabetic coma and hypoglycemias. Let's start with a case. A 45 year old male patient with cough, breathlessness, dizziness and fever for the past five days. He was hypoxemic, saturation 88 percent on non rebreathing face mask, was hypotensive, so clearly in shock with blood pressure 82 over 34 after 2 liter of IV fluid. He was intubated and started on mechanical ventilation. So how do we initially resuscitate? Yes, we should all do the ABC of, for this patient, airway, breathing and circulation, but we should not forget to check the capillary blood sugar of this patient as a part of initial resuscitation because it is imperative that his sugar needs to be controlled. If he's hypoglycemic, that needs to be corrected. So as a part of initial resuscitation, point of care capillary blood sugar, it was checked on this patient which came out to be 350 milligram, which was clearly hyperglycemic. There has been a debate whether point of care capillary blood sugars are as accurate as the lab blood sugars through venous or arterial blood samples, but they take a long time for turnaround time. So capillary blood sugar are still the point of care test for hyperglycemia management. So what is the pathogenesis? Why is this patient hyperglycemic? He's not a known diabetic. So why his blood sugar has gone up? What is the pathogenesis in critical illness of hyperglycemia? It is not increased glycogenesis, but there is increased glycogenolysis during stress. There is definitely increased neoglucogenesis. There is increased lipolysis and there is decreased insulin sensitivity during critical illness. As depicted in this diagram,